Well, I thought it was a very comprehensive speech, which covered not only the concerns by the other G20 governments, but also showing China as an example over the last 38 years of reforms of how it has lifted 700 or more million people out of poverty into a middle class status. It addressed also where China is today and where it needs to go in the future, converting itself from a mass production quantity economy into an economy which concentrates on innovation, research, quality of living, a green economy. I think there was a wonderful thing he said, that a green mountain is much better than a mountain of gold. I thought that was very nice. And it uh, also emphasizes China's participation in the climate talks, with the US and China together accounting for something like 38% of all the greenhouse gases. This is a very important uh, step. I think it's unique because now it's rather tense atmosphere in the world and that's why a calm conversation about economy is important because economy is what feeds people and gives them a chance to survive. Despite all the political chaos, it's the basis. So discussing this basis in the conditions of rather restless and complicated world among the 20 leading world economies could be exactly what is needed now. This summit acts as an economic management board for the whole world as the group's leading economic powers and some other important economies such as Egypt, Saudi Arabia and Turkey. So it's a global board that is intended for crisis management, offering solutions to problems, setting rules for trade relations. Some political issues will be discussed as well. The summit will lead to important measures to boost the global economy and solve some political problems. Innovation is a hard topic for governments. Governments across the world don't have a good track record on, on innovation. So what China is doing here is bold, it is ambitious, by trying to get governments to focus on what they can do about promoting innovation. Uh, as you may know, the, the world economy remains in a precarious state. Protectionism, in a way, is increasing. There are an increasing number of um, free trade agreements, regional free trade agreements, that really impedes the free flow of uh, key factors of production, such as labor, uh, energy, capital, or um, um, uh, lands, for example. So this is not what China wants to see at, at the global level happen. So um, what China aims with invigoration is, is essentially an optimal allocation of the key uh, factors of production. And this has been something that China has been pushing for at the national level as well.